Welcome back to the Prairie Sun and Timber series. I'm Travis Brungard here on The Build Show. With this series, we've been talking to you about this high performance house we've been building out in Missouri. It's a really impressive piece that we're excited to share with you and I am grateful that you came back for part two of our exteriors episodes. We just did our wall assembly in the previous episode and covered all of our Prosico and Zip as well as our window package. And now we're gonna talk about drainage and drying. So. Obviously, when you're, when you're dealing with water, everybody says, well, Steve, of course, down and away. That's really easily accomplished when you do one simple thing, and I think it's one of the remaining low-hanging fruit of building science, it's the rain screen. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about our rain screen strategy, but we're also gonna talk about something that you may not have seen before in a vented overroof. So stick with us, and we'll show you how we did it over here at the Prairie Sun and Timber Project. Prairie Sun and Timber, a Build Original Series, is brought to you by Prosico. Enerlux Windows. And Timber Tech. This episode is sponsored by Coravent. I'm Travis Brungart with Catalyst Construction and also with Build Show. And we were thrilled to work with Prosico on our Prairie Sun and Timber series here in Kansas City. Now, Prosico is a, a national company that provides all sorts of solutions for building durability uh, with cutting edge building science. They're managing water, air, and vapor control with their families of products. And on this particular project, they were a prerequisite for us. This is a SIPS home, meaning structurally insulated panels, basically an OSB skin over foam uh, for a performance function. But OSB is notoriously prone to delamination when it takes on moisture, and that's where Prosco came in to save the day. They offer a family of products to address every joint with their joint and seam filler. Uh, so between these panels, I can fill that gap with joint and seam filler, a little more fibrous. Then I can treat over the top of that with their Fast Flash product, and I do every nail penetration with that so that we have a, a perfect substrate to then apply their Cat5 uh, monolithic coating. Now that Cat5 monolithic coating acts like a house wrap or an integral WRB to completely encapsulate the entire substrate. So from foundation up over the roof and down to the other side on the foundation, we're completely encapsulated in the Prosico family of products here. And that's how we're keeping our blower door score low with great air tightness, but keeping all of our water out. So it's been a real pleasure to work with Prosico on this project and we'll continue to do so. We've been talking through all the important aspects of our control layers here at the Prairie Sun and Timber Project. And as alluded to in the introduction, we've got to talk more about drainage and drying. We've got a really, uh, as Matt would say, a bomber exterior with this Prosico Cat5 WRB. We've got our zip system below. We're really great on exterior air and water control, but we can do more because if we keep water from spending time in suspension between the back of our cladding and the face of our WRB, then that free path of drainage that we've created can allow for uh, an even more enhanced durability condition. So what I'm talking about with that, this is our rain screen system here. We're working with Coravent on this project um, and it, it's a really simple solution, which is one of the things I love about it. I always use Occam's razor, you know, the simplest solution is usually the best. What we're talking about is creating that building science approved ideal 3 8 gap between our cladding and our WRB just by using these corrugated plastic strips from Coravent to separate the cladding from the WRB. That 3 8 gap is what eliminates the possibility of water being held in suspension between the backside of the cladding and the face of the WRB and it allows a path of free drainage. So any bulk water that gets past our siding, moves into this space, can just drain down and away. And then it's no longer our problem. You see that I have two different strips here. 
we've got the Sturdy Batten and the SV3. The SV3 is what we're using everywhere where we have the horizontal lap siding condition. And then of course, if we were doing our board and batten siding, we have it in a vertical uh, orientation. So that means the strips have to be horizontal. So the board and battens running vertically mount to the horizontal SV3. But the other strip that we have is a little different. This is their sturdy batten. This is a little bit wider, uh, actually about twice as wide, but it's the same thickness and it's the same air channels moving air through to allow for drying. If there's water, it would flow down through as well, but it has something very important that's different than the other strip. And it has this very fine insect screen. One of the things that people got nervous about when rain screens started gaining popularity, they're worried about what might move into that space. Cause yeah, we can let the water drain down in a way and we can let air come in and dry the space behind, but you can also bring in insects. And if you bring in insects, you might bring in rodents. You bring in rodents, you bring in snakes. We don't have a menagerie in our walls. What we have is a small filter fabric that's gonna create uh, a real challenge for any sort of pest or insect to infiltrate this system. And we're installing that sturdy batten at our bottom of wall so that we have bottom of wall trims where we don't have uh, as much support with the narrow strip, the wider strip helps with that. We also have it at the top of wall and you'll notice it's held down. We don't want this tight up against the bottom of the soffit because if we're gonna offer drying in addition to drainage, we have to have air moving through. If it's stuck, if it can't get out, we don't get any drying benefit. It would just be air back there that's static. What we wanna do is take advantage of the stack effect. And as we all know, we've got greater pressure low, less pressure high. So we'll actually draw air from below up through the wall assembly and exhaust it out the top of the wall. So our sidings will be held down from our bottom of soffit with an air gap such that we can dry the back wall in addition to draining it. That same technology that we're using for our core vent rain screen on all of our walls is what we're utilizing to move air up to our roof. And that's what I wanna talk about next. Come check it out. All right, so I said it's a little different and it is. I'm sure that you've seen soffit ventilation done with the Coravent S400 before. That's a great product. It keeps a really nice low profile. No one sees it. It allows us to basically put those same strips of Coravent along the backside of the fascia at the bottom, as well as the top. And instead of having to have the cuts in your traditional soffit vent, we're able to offer air infiltration in just what looks like a shadow line from below. So this S400 strip allows air up behind the fascia through a secondary strip that's backing the fascia so that it doesn't rock. And then that air is actually moving up underneath this zip sheathing. Remember, this is a SIP roof. So we have a 10 inch SIP panel that makes up the structure of our roof. On top of that, we have a three quarter furring strip that runs vertically up toward the ridge. And our zip system sheathing is on top of the SIP panel acting as a substrate for our roofing. The reason that's important, well, there's a couple of reasons. Obviously I've been talking about drainage and drying, being able to have air move along the backside of that roof sheathing is doing the same thing for us on the wall and the roof. We're allowing space for drainage and drying. That's just good building science. That adds to the durability of a system. It's gonna cool the roof shingles. Uh, you know, in the summer sun out here, it might be 140 degrees on top of that shingle but having some air move across the back of the sheathing will slightly cool that. That also means we're not transmitting as much heat into the SIP panel underneath. But the main thing for me, I was worried about the SIPs. When we do an asphalt composition roof here, we might put 60,000 nails into a roof. And then we have a hailstorm about every 15 years in Kansas City. They come back out and rip off the roof. Those guys are running pitchforks, not really, but the tools that use to scrape roofing off to move all those shingles off and pull all those nails, that SIP is a structural member, that the surface of the SIP's panel. So if I'm going to be honest with my client about the durability of their home, and I tell them, oh, we're just gonna nail directly to the SIP. Yeah, it's durable today, but in 15 years when we re-roof it, we're gonna degrade the structural integrity of the home. And I don't wanna do that. Obviously, the other thing that we did was applying the Prosco Cat 5 over the top of this SIP. That's our primary air control. And it's our primary water control under this roof, underneath this roof sheathing, I should say. So by creating that cavity, 
of furring strip and then zip system panel on top of the SIPS roof, we've created really enhanced durability for both the temperature of the shingle, the removal and re-roofing is now, this is almost a sacrificial panel. Uh, we don't have any risk to our structure. We don't have any risk to our WRB or our air control. That can be untouched forever underneath this zip system roof. So in order to get that air from down here into the roof and keep it drying, as well as allowing drainage out, we needed that Corvent S400 and that's what we've done. So this entire roof that you see is actually a vented over roof. So we'll have a traditional ridge vent to allow the air that comes in here to escape at the top. And that also allows our drying down and out. So I'm a huge fan of a ventilated over roof. And I think after watching this, you might be too, because it really adds a tremendous amount of durability and peace of mind for me on any project that we do. Hi, I'm Travis Brungard with Catalyst Construction and also with The Build Show. At our Prairie Sun and Timber series, we were fortunate to work with the Coravent product to handle all of our rain screen and roof ventilation needs. Coravent's a robust, corrugated plastic product that allows us to create a drainage gap behind our siding, which is critical for long-term durability and performance. We also use it at the back of our fascia to allow air to ventilate the backside of our roof. And this is a detail we do time and again, and it's a much easier detail to accomplish with a robust product like Coravent. So to effectively execute our ventilated over roof, I talked about using one by four strapping. So we've got one by fours nailed 16 on center over the top of the sips and run all the way up to the ridge. But then you can see we held our zip sheathing short of the top and that condition allows for that ridge vent to be installed and the S400 core vent product behind the fascia to introduce air to the backside of this sheathing, move it up to the top and allow it to exhaust at the ridge vent. Now you'll notice we have two different conditions here. Obviously this is the classic 7 16th zip panel, but the garage is different. And the reason is simple. This is a 24 on center truss assembly, no sips. These panels are all above our conditioned space and a SIPS roof underneath. So this entire area, again, this panel is almost over the life of the house gonna become a sacrificial roof sheathing because when we go ahead and scrape off all of our shingles, there's gonna be damage to the OSB or in this case to the zip panels below. And I didn't want that damage to impact our water and air control of the Prosco Cat 5 because the SIPS panel is the structure. So that was the purpose of this strategy. And you can see that we're ready now to move forward with our roof underlayment and shingles. We've got some metal conditions that'll actually occur here on the low slope. And then on our steeper roofs, we'll be using a, a probably just gonna be a, a, an asphalt composition shingle. But the client's gotta make their selections and then we'll get it done. Well, that's gonna wrap us up for episode four of our Prairie Sun and Timber series, where we covered drainage and drying. If you take nothing else away from this and you're not already doing a rain screen on your project, I would really, really strongly encourage you to do so. If you wanna use the Coravent system, it's really simple. They have a lot of different offerings for whatever you're trying to accomplish, but adding that 3 8 cavity to allow for drainage and drying really supercharges the performance of your claddings and enhances your durability your paint job is gonna last twice as long. You're gonna have really, really enhanced performance uh, and durability on your projects with that vented over roof and a proper rain screen. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we get into our mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems out here at the Prairie Sun and Timber Series.